Hi, shalom, friends. Every culture and tradition has um, folk legends. And in Judaism, we have a city called Chelm, a city in Poland, which was populated by very naive and innocent people, bordering on the foolish. And there are many jokes and stories attributed to the city of fools. But actually, in much of humor, as I've mentioned in the past, there's a wonderful message. So let me share with you a silly story. Many years ago, in the city of Chelm, there lived a charming young lady who was 15 years old. Her name was Shoshana, and she daydreamed a lot. And she knew that in Chelm, at the age of 16, uh, a young woman was already just about married, or married. So that was one of her daydreams. Who would she marry? And one day, she's in her room, daydreaming about her Prince Charming. And she's thinking to herself, well, how Prince Charming will look and how wonderful their life will be and how they'll get along and then how God will bless them with the baby. Of course, it's going to be a baby boy and she already knows the name, Zalman, and they're going to enjoy tickling the baby and watching the baby grow. Well, years will pass and they'll start preparing for his bar mitzvah. They'll make sure that he has good bar mitzvah lessons and six months before the bar mitzvah, they will make for him a suit. Could you imagine going to a tailor, a young, handsome man? And she's going to be so excited. She and her husband, they're going to invite the entire city. And the bar mitzvah will be made for a Monday morning. Of course, Sunday night, they'll be telling their bar mitzvah boy, Zalman, make sure you go to sleep early so you could be charming and knowledgeable the next day and smile at everyone. And Monday morning will come and she will walk into the room and she will bring that new suit and she will wake up Zalman and she, oh my gosh, Zalman, Zalman's not moving. Z Zalman's not moving. Zalman, Zalman, wake up. And then she's going to realize something terrifying. Zalman is not breathing. Zalman! Zalman had died. And she begins to cry. What a tragedy. A calamity. The, the world has been destroyed. And as she's picturing this, she becomes hysterical. Well, this charming young lady had a mother who was in the kitchen and suddenly hears a shriek and a grief-stricken groan and she runs into the room. She sees her beautiful 15-year-old crying. What's wrong, Shoshana? What's wrong? And she looks at her mother. C could you imagine how I'm feeling? No, I just know something terrible happened. What happened? My baby Zalman on the day of his bar mitzvah. What are you talking about? You know, we're going to have a Zalman who will have a bar mitzvah, and on that day he might die. How would you feel, your first grandchild? And the mother starts thinking for a moment, and she shrieks, Ah, Zalman is dead! And they both begin carrying on. The father was outside gardening, and he heard his two favorite women in the world crying. He runs in, what's going on? And they both look at him, didn't you hear? <laughs> Don't you realize the calamity that has taken place? It's this worst in the destruction. What? Salman, your grandson just died. Salman, my grandson just died? When? It was on the day of his bar mitzvah. Oh my gosh, he begins to fall apart. And in no time at all, in a small village, three people shrieking and crying and carrying on, neighbors started to come in. What's happening? How can we help? And the message was a bit garbled. All they could hear was about a child, a bar mitzvah, an only child, a grandmother's hysterical tragedy upon tragedy, and they began to cry. And the city came to a, uh, I should say town, came to a standstill. So here there's a large group gathering in the house, all crying, everyone crying, everyone's grief-stricken, everyone is trying to say, what happened and how can we stop it? And the word spread to the rabbi. 
that something horrible is taking place and he should know about it. So he quickly sends his attendant, go run to the house, tell me what's going on. They runs back, he says, Rebbe, I don't know, I heard there's a plague among uh, bar mitzvah boys, people are dying and there was a terrible tragedy. Someone just died, an only child and uh, oh my gosh, the rabbi, this is very serious, we have to pray to God. Immediately run to the marketplace, stop all business, tell all of the men they have to come to the synagogue right now, this is a rabbi's decree, and we are going to say psalms. We will say Psalm 20 and 22 and 75, and we will pray to God that he should avert this, this terrible plague from affecting anyone of our town. Sure enough, they all listened, they ran, and it was, here it was, on an ordinary day, it was like a Yom Kippur service. People were crying and shouting and pleading with the Almighty, please take away the plague. So while this is happening in two different places, in the synagogue and in the house, a fellow comes in from a neighboring village and he wants to sell a couple of chickens. The marketplace is empty. He asks, where's everyone? In the synagogue. He runs to the synagogue. What, what's going on? No one could talk to him. Everyone's busy praying. Everyone's busy shouting. Everyone's busy pleading with the Almighty. He should take away the plague that's affecting all Bar Mitzvah boys. So he finally manages to get something from someone where did you hear this? I, said, I never heard it. I heard it in the house. He goes to the house. He doesn't even have to ask which house because there's crying and shouting and wailing a half a block down. Oh my gosh. He walks in. Everyone is hysterical. People are crying. And he takes one person and says, excuse me, I'm, I'm a stranger. What's happening? What's happening? There's a terrible... But what's happening? Any details? And the lady looks, I don't know, ask, ask one of the, the closer relatives. So he manages to, to push his way through, and he talks to the aunt of the daughter, who's crying, and she says, well, what's going on? She says, well, I'm not exactly sure, but I believe my, my niece's bar mitzvah boy just died. Oh, that's a terrible thing. How old is she? Why you ask these foolish questions? She's 15. She has a bar mitzvah boy. And I, I, I must talk to the mother. He runs in, and the mother and the daughter are sitting on a low stool as if they're mourning. They barely could talk. They're pale. And he goes over to the mother, and he says, I'm so sorry to hear such frightening news. W which relative died? She looks at him. Which relative? A grandson. My, oh, my only grandson. And his heart begins to flutter. Such a tragedy. He says, and, and who's the mother? And she turns to the 15-year-old. He says to the 15-year-old, pardon me, but I don't understand. How can a 15-year-old woman have a bar mitzvah boy that just died? She says, no, he didn't just die. One I will get married. We will have the son. And the son will be a boy. And the boy will grow up. And we were going to prepare for the bar mitzvah. And could you just imagine what would happen if he were to die? I said, ah, now I understand. Yes, it would be a terrible thing. But young lady, you haven't yet married. So you haven't yet conceived. You haven't yet had a child. You haven't yet had the boy. And 13 years hadn't yet passed. So nothing happened. The tragedy was pushed away. It disappeared. She listens, and it struck her. She said, you're right. She turned to her mother. Mother, there's nothing to cry about. It didn't yet happen. And suddenly the word quickly spread that the, the plague had stopped, and everything is right. He realized he's dealing with so many innocents he better quickly tell the rabbi who's going to probably declare a 28-hour fast. He runs back to the synagogue. They're really into this uh, recital of, 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 the, of King David's psalms. And he runs over to the rabbi and says, Rabbi, Rabbi, you could stop saying psalms. And he's saying, why? He said, Rabbi, because the tragedy has been averted. He said, how do you know? 
He said, well, Rebbe, with a big smile on his face, it never happened. She never married. She never had the child. She never had the boy, which means that they never had the bar mitzvah because it never existed. To which the rabbi, with a big smile, turns to the people and he says, you see the power of Psalms? When one prays properly, God takes away tragedy. And that, my friends, is the end of this silly story. So what did I tell to you? Well, because I enjoyed it, number one. And number two, just think for a moment. Hopefully there's a smile or better yet a chuckle. Just think for a moment. This girl imagined something that imagined something else, which led to something else, and the conclusion was horrible. So here we are, make believe I'm a parent, and my son who's supposed to be home at seven o'clock does not come up at seven. And I wait for 7.30, and I'm getting upset. Why didn't he call? Why does he come so late? And now it comes 8 o'clock, and I'm mi mildly anxious. And now it's a quarter to 9. So tell me, what am I thinking? I'll tell you what some people are thinking. 7.30, didn't come, completely irresponsible. Disrespectful, I'm going to ground him. 8 o'clock. You know, I think he must have fallen and broken his leg. Maybe, maybe uh, he'll come limping in and I won't have to disown him after all. 8.30, I bet you he was kidnapped. A quarter to nine, oh my gosh, maybe aliens abducted him. What's going to be? Of course, uh, am I exaggerating? Only a little bit. Because at 9.15, he walks in. And the first thing you do instead of throwing something is hug him and kiss him. I was so worried. And he says, Ma, I'm so embarrassed. I was playing video games and I just completely forgot. I'm sorry. That's it. He, he was not harmed. He was not kidnapped. He was not abducted. And he's going to live for a very long life. Just think about the source of our anxiety. So much of it is... is based on something that never happened. You're looking for a job, you got a job interview, you were turned down. So what are you saying? Okay, I picked the wrong profession. Probably no one will ever hire me. Probably if no one ever hires me, I'll never get a job. Probably if I will never get a job, I won't be able to pay my rent and I'll be homeless. If I'll be homeless, chances are I'll be abused by the people on the street. Oh, what might happen is I might die of starvation and be buried in an unmarked grave. Come on, come on, it's just, come on. Is that really what's going to happen? Is there any way to predict tomorrow or an hour or a minute? Why are we getting so nervous and anxious about things. So I think that this silly story uh, talks to us because we're that silly people. And there are things that are upsetting and there are concerns, legitimate concerns, but they're very limited. And very often those concerns can be addressed with something positive. So your son is late, call up the friend, find out where he might be. Don't sit and fantasize the worst. You know, part of this is connected really to firm belief in God. I know the vast majority, and I'm sh I have an, uh, I don't know how I know, but I know you that's watching believes in God. But belief in God is not enough. You have to trust God. You have to affirm that because God is alive, God is real, God is genuine, by and large, he will, his providence will, will be directed in a manner of protection. So, what should we do? Think positive. What else should we do? Be confident. What else should we do? Hear a silly story every day and smile. And finally, the rabbi was not wrong. Saying Psalms is always good. <laughs> Saying a prayer doesn't have to be reserved for a tragedy that happened. It could be said for a tragedy that should not happen. It should be said for good news as well.
So shalom, friends, and may Hashem always be with you. Thank you.